From the High Definition Educational Broadcast Center at Bergen Community College's main campus in Paramus, this is Studio Bergen. Hi everyone, I'm Larry Lavanka, and welcome to Studio Bergen. In this half hour, we'll look at the news, events, and people making headlines at Bergen Community College. Our top story this month is the Bergen Community College Foundation's annual Medallion Awards Dinner, which took place November 18th at Rockley Country Club. The yearly event, which is the college's major fundraiser, supports student scholarships, faculty research, and other charitable causes at Bergen. Organizers and college officials, such as Interim President Dr. Jose Adamas, said the event is important. Some of our students, even though they receive financial aid from the federal government, from the state, you know, it doesn't cover everything that is needed for tuition. There are sometimes gaps, and this, these, these kinds of scholarship events really support those students and the students' ability to stay at the institution, to be successful, to fulfill their dreams. Each year at the Medallion Awards, the college recognizes an individual or organization that has contributed to the well-being of the community. This year's honoree, the Oritani Bank Charitable Foundation, has donated more than $2 million to various organizations in the county, including a $100,000 gift to the college announced at the Medallion Awards. Foundation Chair Robert Hakimian Jr. said the bank was a deserving honoree. Oritani has been helping individuals, families, and businesses in Bergen County for 100 years. And I think that is a major accomplishment, especially in today's world. 100 years, folks. That's pretty darn good. To date, the Bergen Community College Foundation has raised more than $19 million for the benefit of Bergen students through events such as the Medallion Awards, the BCC Golf Classic, and other fundraisers. Scholarships are distributed to students at the Foundation's annual Scholarship Awards ceremony each May and other events. In other news, registration is in full swing this month for the college's upcoming Winterim and Spring 2012 semesters. Winterim, which takes place exclusively at Bergen Community College at the Meadowlands in Lyndhurst, begins January 2nd and ends January 20th. Although the schedule is intensive, three-hour classes meeting every day for two and a half weeks, students from Bergen and other colleges can earn three credits for each class they complete, making it ideal for students home for winter break and looking to accelerate their graduation or catch up on missed classes. Additionally, spring registration continues for classes beginning January 23rd. For information on registering for either semester or both, Stop by the Registration Center, room A129 in the Pitkin Education Center at Bergen's main campus in Paramus or visit go.bergen.edu. Speaking of winter, the holiday season is upon us and that means the college will be closed the week between Christmas and New Year's. Bergen will shut its doors for the holidays beginning December 24th and reopen January 2nd. Let's go back to one of last month's most important holidays, Veterans Day. On November 11th at 11 a.m., the college gathered in the Student Center for Bergen's annual Veterans Ceremony. This year, some of Bergen's more than 300 student veterans attended, in addition to faculty and staff veterans. Professor and veteran Mike Eccles spoke at the ceremony. To introduce myself, my name is Mike Eccles. I am an Associate Professor of Communication here at Bergen Community College. I'm also the President of the New Jersey Communication Association. I am a husband. I am a son, but as much as anything, the title I'm proud to say is, I am a veteran. And I want to say thank you to all of those who are here today who also claim that title besides everything else that you are. The ceremony included remarks and a walk to the college's flagpole near Paramus Road where attendees recited the Pledge of Allegiance and saluted the flag. November also marked various recognition weeks at the college, including Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, and Transgender Week, International Education Week, and Asian Heritage Week. At the featured event of GLBT Week on November 8th, gay author and activist Jamie Nabosny spoke about his experiences of being bullied due to his sexual orientation and fighting back. Later that month, at Asian Heritage Week, one of the college's own, graduate Rafael Giuliano, who now attends Brown, returned to discuss his heritage, 
his time at Bergen, and determination. I stand before you today as a testament that anything can be done and will be done so long you set your heart to it. You are going to hear 1,000 things of how you cannot do it or you cannot do it the way people tell you to do it. I'm here to let you know that you can do it and it can be done. Giuliano was followed by former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State and diplomat Si Chan Siv, who served as the keynote speaker for the Heritage Week. Siv, who came to the U.S. with $2 in his pocket after escaping the Cambodian genocide, spoke to a packed Anna Maria Sacconi Theater. It's only in America that somebody like me, who arrived here in the United States in 76 with $2 in my pocket, would make it all the way to the White House in 13 years. So that is a celebration of our heritage, of our country, and of our nation. The college will celebrate Interfaith Month this month and Black History Month in February. Shifting gears, and I do mean gears as in machines and mechanical equipment when talking about this faculty member, we looked at the college's Industrial Design and Technologies program and Professor Matt King in this month's Faculty Focus where he talked about a surprising employment field in the county. You would never think that Bergen County is, uh, is filled with uh, manufacturing employment possibilities, but uh, having gone out in the field with my colleague and spoken to a number of, of manufacturing uh, CEOs and, and uh, owners of the company, they are actually in dire need of young, skilled uh, workers to the point where uh, one of the local industry people are considering that they might even have to relocate if they do not get enough skilled workers in time. Their workforce averages 55 and above, and in another 10 to 15 years, uh, they're facing uh, retirement and there is not enough people to replace them. I was very startled to hear that information, and that seems to be a common thread uh, when you speak with the local industry. Even in a changing environment for manufacturing, King said there will always be a spot for talented, trained professionals. As long as there are machines, even if there's uh, machines that keep track of machines, we have to have people that uh, maintain them, that design them, that replace them. Uh, so there's always going to be some sort of work. And then we need programmers with the knowledge of how these machines work to be able to, as in a CNC operator, to keep them running. So the employment never goes away. The responsibilities shift as the, uh, as the technology emerges and, and advances. King said he takes it upon himself to help the students break into the field. As companies catch on that we are training uh, students with their need, the phone starts ringing more and more often. In the other part of my program, in the IDT, I'm almost a job placement person. Now, given the economic climate that has settled down uh, recently, but I would get calls regularly from local employers saying I need a student with this expertise or that expertise, and it gives me great joy to recommend and, and actually have somebody you know, live their dream and, and have the system work, where they go out and they get successfully employed, and years later I'll hear back from them and they are moving up the chain and they're very happy. For King, working in the college's advanced labs with equipment satisfies his own need to get his hands dirty and pass it on to the next generation. I'm very visual. I draw everything up. Uh, my mom used to kid. Uh, I couldn't have a conversation without a pad and pencil and, and showing her a diagram of something. And, uh, and that led to uh, the love of teaching. I have a lot of teaching in my family background. My dad was a principal. Uh, my uncle is a professor. My uh, sister was a, a teacher and now owns a school, a private school. So it's in my family blood and, uh, you know, and I, I really enjoy teaching. Coming up after a short break, We'll look at a few conferences that took place last month, including one on seniors in suburbia and another on hip-hop and gangs. It's always an eclectic mix here on Studio Bergen, isn't it? Stay with us. We'll be right back. After a car accident, Linda Davis needed CPR. Bill Hamilton needed temporary shelter when a fire destroyed his home. During an operation, Haley Reynolds needed a blood transfusion. Excuse me, may I go into that room, please? 
Thank you for giving me blood. Thank you for giving me shelter. Thank you for saving my life. Support the Red Cross and change a life, starting with your own. Welcome back to Studio Bergen. I'm Larry Lavanka. November 17th was the day to kick the habit. As part of the nationwide initiative, the college participated in the Great American Smokeout, which aims to convince smokers to finally stop lighting up, even for just one day. At the event, hosted by Bergen's Wellness Center, participants got a first-hand look at what smoking does to the body and were treated to blood pressure screenings, massages, and examinations. According to the Journal of Public Health, smokers who quit can add anywhere from two to nine years to their lives. Speaking of long lives, the college hosted Seniors in Suburbia on November 4th, which sought to answer questions about the county's aging population, why they have stayed, the role of the suburbs in the American ideal, and other emerging issues. The event, which featured a panel discussion attended by more than 200, was hosted by the Lois E. Marshall Institute for Learning and Retirement, the Bergen Community College Suburban Studies Group, and various other organizations. Renowned expert on the topic of suburbia, Bergen professor Dr. Philip Dolce, explain why there are issues for seniors in the suburbs. The population is aging rapidly in suburbia. Nobody expected this. They thought empty nesters would uh, go back to the city or to a warmer climate. As one of my students charmingly said, what do you think Florida is for? But in, as a matter of fact, suburbia, um, senior citizens are aging in place and the place they're aging in uh, needs some work. Um, a, a great place to grow up in isn't necessarily the best place to grow old in. Uh, front steps, multi, uh, multi floors in a house, a lack of sidewalks, all of this has to be addressed. Yet, the seniors are here, an accommodation has to be made, and it will be made. They're a vital part of, the, of this population. From seniors to rappers, on November 17th, the college's Center for Peace, Justice, and Reconciliation was the chief sponsor of the Dialogue with Pioneers of Hip Hop and Law Enforcement about Gun and Gang Violence Conference. Panelists such as Cool Herc, known as the father of hip hop, and Lord Cassius D, head of the Chicago chapter of the Universal Zulu Nation, spoke alongside members of the Bergen County Gang Task Force and even a former member of Scotland Yard in discussing how hip-hop pioneers have tried to combat gang violence through their music and mediation. Cool Herc talked about the company you keep and parental guidance. Sometimes it's hip to be square, you know what I'm saying? Because your mother always tell you, your father tell you, don't hang with that guy. It's a reason to. I know you got to know the good and the bad, but at the same time too, once you leave your door, the pressure's on. But your first hero is the person that waking up in the morning and putting food in your mouth. That's your hero. More than 100 students and members of the public attended the conference. Now let's turn our attention to this month's events in December's campus calendar. The college's performing arts talents return to the stage with a man for all seasons, beginning December 1st and running through December 10th. For showtimes and tickets, visit tickets.bergen.edu. The Anna Maria Sacconi Theater closes its 2011 season with a festival of winter holiday music on Friday, December 16th at 7.30 p.m. For tickets, call 201-447-7428. Bergen's Hackensack location, the Philip Siarco Jr. Learning Center, will host its second annual holiday gift and craft fair, December 6th, 7th, and 8th, from 10 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. in its lobby at 355 Main Street. In the last segment of this month's show, we'll close as we do every month with In Studio. It's time to wave the pom-poms and put on your school colors. This month's guest is Jorge Hernandez, the Interim Athletic Director. Welcome to the show, Jorge. Thanks for having me. So today we're going to talk a little bit about Bergen Athletics, talk about how our teams are doing, uh, look forward to the winter sports that are coming up, uh, talk about how we did in the fall, and talk about what's on the horizon for spring too. So let's talk about how did we do this fall? How did our teams do? Oh, we had a wonderful fall. Uh, our volleyball team made the playoffs. Uh, our women's soccer team made the playoffs. And our cross country with the first-year coach, Laura Dorso, trained them 
you know, was able to put a team together to go to nationals. We finished third place in the region. And uh, in the nationals, we finished in 15th place. And our, uh, we had some good individual uh, performances by our volleyball uh, player, Hallie Dukes, who made first team all region. Our uh, women's soccer player was uh, Christine Vill Villanueva, who was also player of the week. And she also made first team and actually was uh, fourth in the region, uh, region 19. Uh, for, uh, she may be nominated for uh, All-American, you know, so we're still waiting for that voting. And uh, cross country, our, our number one runner was uh, Ryan Arnold. And he uh, actually placed, I believe, uh, below 50, you know, between 25 and 50. And he did really well. Uh, as far as our men's soccer team that everybody had a, was very excited about. And, uh, they had, had a big a, upset. Big upset, huge upset. And uh, to be honest with you, the whole year, uh, the, the coach right away told me, Christian Regosa told me that he felt that this team really had a, a chance to compete uh, before we even played a game. And uh, I was like, okay, you know, I heard this before, you know. And he, uh, he really put the team together. Uh, there were a lot of players from last year who were injured or didn't finish out the season that were actually on this team. And uh, there were a lot of new faces, freshmen. Uh, they, they put it all together. And it just it kept, they, they were beating on teams, 4 nothing, 5 nothing. I was impressed. I was like, wow. Uh, we had a tough loss during the regular season versus a number one team in the nation, Brookdale. Uh, it was an overtime loss. And I think that really... Uh, you know, you take a step back, and then that really, I think, pushed them harder to work. And really, when, when we faced them in the playoffs, you could we see. We avenged it. <laughs> we avenged it. Yeah, so this team really, they, they, they try even harder. Once they take a step back, they, they work even harder to, uh, to compete. Uh, so the team ended up with 10 wins, I think it was, uh, right. with a big victory mm -hmm. over Brookdale. Uh, in the Region 19 tournament, right? Yeah, they were undefeated. Which, they were an undefeated yeah. team, so that's obviously a huge win. Um, that win propelled Bergen into mm -hmm. the Region 19 finals, right? Yes. Uh, and then it, we ended up losing in the finals, uh, but we still got an at-large bid. So talk about that. What did that mean for the, uh, the kids to um, come up short in, in the Region 19 championship, but still actually get to go to the national tournament? You know, I, I spoke to the team and I, I told them, I said, you know, you died at Union, you know, and now this is your second opportunity to resurrect yourself and, and prove something to the whole nation that you guys are the top team in the nation, you know, and uh, they had a tough, uh, a tough game versus Herkimer, the weather conditions, they were the host, mm -hmm. you know, their, their fans were all there and they, the Herkimer has been there for every year, I think they're always in there. And this was actually our first national tournament. Uh, and uh, we came out scoring the first goal and then uh, we, uh, we gave up one, we gave up two, we gave up a three, and then all of a sudden we, we come back, we get a, a nice shot by uh, uh, Victor Lopez, and we were 3-2, and it just it got away from us, I think. You know? But uh, the following day, we, we were happy that we were facing Union that knocked us out in the Region 19 finals, and uh, we were able to, uh, we beat them 4 nothing. You know? So it proved to, I think it showed everybody that we belonged there. In a consolation game, right. you beat them. So. Right. So that's great. So the, the men's soccer team obviously had a, a real big year, um, and so did the volleyball team, women's soccer. That's, mm -hmm. that's great, the cross-country team too. So uh, talking about winter sports now, which we're getting in the, uh, the midst of right now, um, we've got our basketball teams, which are kind of the crown jewel of the uh, Bergen Bulldogs. Uh, let's talk about what do their prospects look like for this year. Sure. I mean, for women's basketball, um, we lost all our starters. Um, we have uh, Kayla Jeva and uh, Yohaira coming back, and uh, they 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 seem to be taking the team uh, to um, from their experience from the past few years, you know, and uh, learning how to win. And this is all, and the rest of the team is pretty much uh, <clears throat> freshmen; they don't know each other. Excuse me. <clears throat> and um, right now, I believe they're uh, two and two, and they. They, they seem like they're, they're getting, I'm starting to see quick passes. They're starting to get to know each other. They're starting to gel. And I see good things for them for this year. 
All right, on the men's side mm -hmm. now, I, I mentioned it before, kind of the crown jewel mm -hmm. of Bergen Athletics. I say that because obviously uh, the men's team uh, had a real good run a few years ago. They went to the national championship uh, two years in a row, uh, and one year they had an undefeated season, regular, uh, regular season that is, uh, before losing in the national championship. But um, how do they look this year? Again, uh, they, they're also going through a, a changeover with uh, only one returner, and uh, he, he didn't play much last year. So this, again, uh, from Coach Matt O'Dallon, our first-year coach, it, it's going to have to um, – he's going to have to do the same thing that, he, that uh, was done a couple years ago, was let these guys learn to play together. And, uh, because there's a, there's a lot of talent on the team. And once they get to know each other, I, I feel I, – I just see they're, they're losing a lot of games right now that are real close, overtime losses. Once they could gel it, I, I think they're going to go on a run in the second half. Do you think, uh, especially the run that the men went on a few years ago, do you think that's helped the cachet for all of Bergen Athletics? Do you think it's, it's helped us get our name out there a little bit more? Absolutely. You know, we, get, we, we, we had exposure through TV, through the newspapers. Um, even our own administration had a, big, had a lot of buzz about the uh, basketball team and the athletic program. And once you hear that, you start asking, oh, what other sports does Bergen have? You know, and then I think that really gave exposure to all the teams. And I think that's why we have, we've been having a lot of success even this past fall, the uh, past spring, because people know that Bergen has a Division three program that is in a very good region and that will be able to compete with the top teams in the nation. Um, we also have wrestling, which is uh, they had a great year, a few of the wrestlers last year. Um, what do we have coming up for uh, their prospects this year? Well, Mike, Mike Mazenzio is going to second year. And he's... He's a former UFC fighter, yes. right? Uh, this is our coach MMA, now that we're talking uh, about. He's on internet, he's on TV, and uh, I think that gives us a lot of exposure. You know, I, I was at the practice the other day, and they could tell their, the atmosphere that this is going to be a special year for wrestling. You know, last year we, brought, we sent three people, three wrestlers to, to the Nationals, and um, I think this year we're going to have... A lot of good things right. from the wrestling program. All right, maybe bring home a national championship yeah. there. Uh, spring sports, uh, we're a little uh, before that right now, so you might not have a great read on what's going on. Mm -hmm. But the baseball team uh, does play a fall schedule, so you might have a, a better read on, on what their spring uh, prospects are like. But uh, tell us about baseball and, and the other spring sports and, and how they're looking. Our, I know our golf team um, had a big year last year, too, where they ended up, I believe they were region champs. or they, yes, and they, went they to won the, the title, yeah. And they went title. to the national championship. So let's kind of cover those now. Sure. Uh, well, baseball, we had a 4-1 record. Our, the weather was obviously kept us from playing more games, but uh, I really think that this is a team that, that's going to go far. Uh, we, we did really well last year. Uh, we made it to the second round of the playoffs, and I think that's the first time we ever made the second round in the playoffs. Uh, anyway, it's at least 25 years uh, with great competition. This, the baseball in the, this region is phenomenal, um, and we have a lot of pitching, always good. We have three really strong catchers and a lineup that uh, is going to cause problems for the other teams. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be another successful season for us, a 40-game season. Uh, we plan to uh, have, a, have them go away. Also, softball is going to go away. Um, softball actually have, has a lot of returners this year, and that's always a, it's always good to have returners coming back. Mm -hmm because uh, it just, there'll be more leaders on the team. Mm -hmm. Especially and, in the community college environment where you know, really we only have these kids for two years in some cases. Right, and uh, since there's a lot of turnover and the fact that we're, we're getting a majority of our softball players back, I think that's gonna be uh, a team that's gonna make some news and uh, show, maybe open some eyes you know, about our program, our softball program. Yeah. Well, Jorge? Thanks well, for being on two, the show. I have a few other sports, though. <laughs> I want to talk about. Well, all right, well, that's fine. The Go golf, ahead. the golf you already spoke about, mm -hmm. and they um, they're doing very well uh, as far as recruiting. They have a lot of returners for next year, so like you said, they're going to they made the re they won the region last year. I ex we expect to have do that again this year. I mean, it's going to be tough. They're going to go after us, um, and uh, we have track and field, which is also. Uh, very uh, with Erica Choiko, uh, second year, and uh, we have two new assistant coaches with her, and I think that's going to have uh, maybe might get an All American out of that, and also tennis. Tennis, uh, we always compete with tennis, and we're actually 
going to have a women's tennis team for the fall wow. for the first time. So that's that's where we're hoping to. Uh, that's great. Go Bulldogs, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being on the show, Jorge. Really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in this month. Don't forget to visit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Bergen Community College and tell us what you think. From all of us here at Bergen Community College, happy holidays and happy new year. Thanks and take care.